Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I'll be doing sort of an expanded video on a topic that I started talking about in my Kingdoms of Amalur video um, when I started talking about loot and balancing. Um, so this is going to be sort of the expanded version of that topic and the first thing is um, some games tend to use what I call Excel loot which is basically meant to keep you in this sort of um, part of the balance where um, up here is easy easy you ha you're basically too strong um, you do too much damage no wait the scales are wrong whatever let's just say that is easy and this is hard um, basically the player's strength is supposed to be in a sort of narrow band of um, enemy difficulty meaning that the game is always um, sort of hard enough to keep the gameplay interesting and not too easy um, and not too hard. Some games are obviously on the the harder scale like Dark Souls um, and some are on the easier scale something maybe like Ratchet and Clank for instance. Um, basically trying to keep the gameplay interesting for a certain type of um, audience. Um, now balance is important um, if you're doing something like multiplayer um, that is a competitive multiplayer not co-op um, but when you're doing something like a single player game some skills and some items in my opinion should be allowed to be overpowered um, they can be balanced in other ways for instance having a super good spell on a longer cooldown or having it cost more mana or be more situational Let's say, for instance, you have a spell that takes the two nearest enemies and knocks them together and kills them. Um, that is a very situational spell, because as soon as you run into one monster, you can't use that spell ever. Um, so it's a situational spell that is extremely overpowered in some situations. Um, it's obviously a bad example, because just killing enemies straight out is pretty bad, but um, you get the point. Um, so this is um, Excel loot and the more um, item slots and the more item upgrades you get the more likely it is that you stay within this sort of um, level. In something like uh, World of Warcraft for instance you get loot all the time that is small upgrades from quest rewards and stuff like that and you level up rarely meaning you're, um, you're likely to use, um, use your items for fewer levels because you get more upgrades. Um, in a single player game it might look more like this um, because your base your power level stays the same until you get an upgrade and then that upgrade oops, knocks you up to the next level and this upgrade knocks you up to here um, so if the enemies are still sort of within this band you will run into situations where you're stronger um, like when you're over the top here and weaker when you're sort of below the line um, so fewer big upgrades have a bigger impact on the gameplay just because they sort of knock the difficulty balancing off uh, assuming the enemies are um, linearly balanced like this. Um, but the comp complexity, um, basically the damage per health scale is the same for the entire game um, meaning that the gameplay is sort of stale um, obviously you get other things that impact gameplay like skills or talents in most games but in Kingdoms of Amalur you really didn't. Um, so the loot system if you're just grabbing whatever uh, items you can and always just switch to the next one um, loot isn't a choice. Um, now there are some obvious other effects in regard to loot systems uh, whoops, I should start from the top. Oh yeah, the, so the gameplay is static. Nothing changes depending on your loot because you always switch to the next one and you don't get any additional skills, you don't get um, anything that changes the gameplay. Um, but you still get the rewards, meaning that once you've performed a task you get rewarded by an item that may look cool or something like that. So there are some other psychological effects here. 
And then I showed you before the gambling part. Um, this is pr probably the only reason why Diablo still has an identify system, um, basically forcing you to stand still and uh, wait for the cool item to show up. Um, because gambling should not be underestimated in any sort of um, game environment. It's a powerful motivator for some people. So instead of items, skills are the thing that um, sort of create the complexity. Um, because if items, if the better uh, or the item with more stats on it is always the better item, choosing items is, it's not really a choice, it's just something you do. Um, but switching between skills, on the other hand, is um, sort of a more interesting option, at least in Diablo 3. Uh, again, in Kingdoms of Amalur here on the right, um, you never have to switch between skills because you don't get more than four or five, and they all fit on your um, sort of quick bar, meaning you will never have to choose between different skills. Uh, on the other hand, in Diablo, you only have six slots uh, to put skills in, um, and sort of combining the different skills is uh, what creates the gameplay. Now obviously Diablo has um, a few different types, like your main uh, energy creator, or spell that is free. Um, then you have your main uh, spender of energy, or resource spender. Um, you tend to have one mobility skill and one uh, sort of longer cooldown or more powerful skill. Um, so you're still kind of locked into different builds, um, but I haven't actually played Diablo enough to know um, sort of the skill builds and stuff like that. I actually went back into it yesterday just to sort of prepare for this video, and it is, um, and I'm happy to say this, it's a much much better game now than it was at release. Um, I only played the um, sort of vanilla game, I don't have the expansion. Um, but I would actually recommend it now, as opposed to uh, when it was released. Um, so the next thing that's interesting with Diablo 3 is that the glyph system um, is basically what creates um, sort of the deeper complexity with the skill builds, because uh, as I said before, you tend to run with a few um, sort of specific groups of skills. Um, so the glyphs create um, basically um, how you play the game. For instance, you can go more towards single target, you can do uh, more of a run and gun type, or you can do more of um, AOE, close up, um, pulling enemies together, slowing them, doing damage, for instance, or you can do um, things like um, stunning the enemy up here. Um, let's see, what is there? damage increases after using it. Um, so you can basically combo some things together to create more of a uh, more of a build as opposed to just a combination of different skills that don't do anything with each other. Um, and then there are these um, sort of stale ones, increased damage. Um, some of these actually switch the element, um, meaning that if you have something that boosts an elemental skill uh, you can switch to that skill uh, and sort of um, using that uh, boost to greater effect. Um, but there are actually games that have items which are really significant. For instance, Dota 2 is a great example of having extremely few items w that have um, sort of equal um, effects. Nearly all of them have either sort of a passive effect that um, either this one is reliable, this one is random, um, and then they also have um, activatable effects. And these effects tend to have a really huge impact on how you play the game. Um, even something like this from Diablo 2 here um, is a more impactful item than nearly all of the items in Diablo 3, at least on release. Um, I actually have an example from Diablo 3 to show you, which uh, makes me really happy. Um, 
So this one, it gives you an aura uh, passive. It gives you an activatable skill. Um, then it gives boosts to skills you have already. Um, so it's just the rune words in Diablo 2 were one of the coolest things in my opinion. For instance, you could get teleport uh, on every character, meaning that it wasn't just sorceress. Um, you could get um, amplified damage. Um, you could get summons like these. Um, just a bunch of things that you could actually choose to have as opposed to waiting for a random drop. Uh, obviously the runes uh, were random drops and actually putting them together required sort of metagaming which is not optimal. Um, but yeah, you can make items that um, have an impact on the games you play and I, I'd really like to see this in more games. Um, obviously Dota 2, um, once you have something like uh, Scotty, you're never ever going to switch it out. The same goes probably for Abyssal, Satanic. Um, so you only get the changes uh, every once in a while, but since the games are only like an hour long, they don't have to deal with the problem of um, being or being forced to choose between different type, types of items. Um, which in Diablo is a much bigger concern because the game just lasts for hours and hours. Um, I have no idea how long it took to get someone to 19, level 99 in Diablo 2, but it was probably days. And something like World of Warcraft obviously um, also has a sort of huge effect. Um, but World of Warcraft was the same. Basically the, the items were essentially pointless as uh, gameplay items, they were more of the rewards uh, because um, I was a raider uh, when I played and something you got in like a 25 man raid was only a couple of percentage points better than something you found outside for the most part. Um, meaning that um, it was more about the sort of experience and being able to show, hey, look at this cool item that I found in a hard dungeon, than it was about the actual gameplay, because you tended to play this, the game the same way from level, um, you know, from level 60, uh, the instant you started, to level 60 when you uh, were sort of at the end of the raid um, scale, and the same for level 70 and 80. Like every time a new expansion comes, the gameplay changes. Um, I haven't played WoW since Lich King, so I'm not not an expert. Um, and there are also uh, different ways of balancing um, items, like, like I said before. You can create something that is extremely good and just give it a long cooldown, um, because that sort of creates more player choice than it does um, if you can use it all the time, or if it's sort of a an aura. Um, an overpowered aura is obviously uh, game breaking. Um, you can also have something um, that is a bit cooler than cooldowns, in my opinion, uh, which is charges, meaning um, you have several cooldowns in a row basically. You just, whoops, you just have a timeline, and at each of these marks, you get one extra charge and you can use one, two, three, five charges in this case. So you can use them whenever you want, meaning that you can sort of, let's say you have a defensive cooldown for instance, you can use the charges uh, as long as you save a couple of charges maybe for a shitty situation, you can sort of play more aggressively because you know that you have something to fall back on. Unlike the cooldown for instance that you tend to save for this um, hypothetical uh, shitty situation. Uh, you can be more liberal with charges because um, you can have a couple of them left. Um, let's say you go from five to two charges for instance. That means you can still get out of two bad situations and you just tend to use a skill that has charges more than you use something that has a really long cooldown because you never know when you're going to run into that scary monster. 
Um, for instance, in Shadow Hearts, the combo system is one of the coolest parts of the combat system in that game. And you tended to not combo basic enemies because you never knew when you were going to run into that boss that required you to sort of have these charges. Um, but in that game, you actually had two, um, two combo charges, meaning you could be sort of liberal with the first one. Uh, the problem was that um, a full combo required you to do double combo. Um, so charges is one of instance. The random effect is also one um, that is tend to be used a lot. Uh, I don't really like um, random effects that are high powered. Um, instead, I like them more for things that are sort of smaller. Um, let's say you have a weapon, for instance, one does 50 damage, and then you get to choose between um, another one that is, it does 25 damage plus 10% uh, chance of doing uh, 250. So these are the same um, mathematically. Um, but I would still probably want to go for the first one because it's just more reliable. Um, and the problem with random effects is that they tend to happen um, when you you don't need them. Um, the charges is perfect. You can always use it when, um, when you want it. Um, but the random effects, like the bigger the random part of the effect is, the less re reliable that weapon becomes and basically makes it less uh, useful. Um, if you had, for instance, either this or you could have five charges of uh, math, it's hard, five charges doing lots of damage. Um, you could basically uh, use the charges whenever you had to instead of having a random effect that procs when you don't need it. Um, and the next one I called event requirements. So this is um, it, instead of waiting for charges, like waiting for time, basically, meaning that you're not playing, uh, this requires that you get kills, for instance, or you get hit, or you, um, you're close, close to enemies, or you, uh, I don't know, you run. Uh, no, running is bad because then you can just run and charge it up. Um, but uh, I should probably have come up with a couple of these examples before I did the video. But yeah, basically meaning that you have an item that once you do certain X number of things, um, something happens. Um, either you get a buff or something like that. This just means that you have to keep playing constantly. Um, you could have something that um, you get stacks. So each time you kill an enemy, you get a stack. And if you don't kill something in a certain number of time, you drop all of the stacks. Uh, meaning, um, as long as you keep killing, um, you're basically going to keep your weapon at the uh, top level. And I actually have the example here, um, as usual, drawing on the wrong layer. This is the important part. When three or more enemies are within 12 yards, you release a vile stench that deals weapon damage as poison. Uh, basically what this means is that you get an item that promotes uh, pulling enemies into you. Um, and this is a huge impact on gameplay. There could be weapons, obviously, that does X percent more damage when um, when you only have one enemy close to you. Uh, but in this case, it promotes aggressive play, uh, basically forcing you to be, be closer to enemies to use this, uh, this item well. And as you can see here, this is level 27. Uh, my character is currently level 42 or something, and I'm still using these. Um, because it's just so much fun. Um, I'm playing a monk character, a monk, um, that has a skill pulling enemies towards you, 
um, and then you heal yourself and stuff like that. So um, you basically focus more on AoE um, instead of um, just basically doing your standard build that works great against enemies, uh, against all types of enemies. And you basically uh, rely more on your items than you do your skills uh, or a combination of the two. Um, so let's go to the next part. Um, there are a few types of skill changes that tend to happen when you're um, when you're getting items. Uh, for instance, the AOE can get bigger. Damage is the obvious one. Uh, mana usage goes down, or cooldown cooldown uh, decreases. These are sort of some of the standard ones. Um, and you can actually combine these with uh, sort of skill interactions. Let's say, for instance, you have your um, Inferno spell, spell here uh, that does damage like this. Let's say all all fire element uh, does more damage. More damage with distance. distance long words uh, meaning that you're always you always want to keep the enemies at the sort of tip of the uh, inferno if you extend the the length of the inferno here um, the enemies are going to come sort of further and further away for the optimal damage and let's say you have some other skills like frost nova um, the distance of the frost nova um, Let's say it's here, meaning it's uh, sort of the perfect distance for your standard Inferno. Um, if you increase the damage the further away the enemies are, you're going to have to rely on other skills to keep them at that distance. Um, basically changing the game around um, just by uh, having these mechanics that uh, sort of declare how all the skills of that type work and then playing with the distances or the AOE or anything like that. Um, and then there's also a bunch of other um, other sorts of ways to change the skills. Um, so this one I didn't really know what to call it, but let's say instead of having the damage maxed at the far end, you switch it around so the um, the highest damage point is actually the closest to your character. Um, this means that the closest, the closer to you the enemies get, you get in more trouble, but they do as well. Um, so it's just sort of playing around with how the skills interact. You can have buffs or debuffs, let's say, um, either um, the more damage you do, you get 1% uh, extra move speed. Uh, or each um, each X number of damage ticks with Inferno, your next fire spell deals twice as much damage. Or the debuffs, they slow enemies, or they take extra damage, or they do less damage. Um, up to a cap, obviously. Um, movement, I started on this um, before, but for each tick, uh, you run faster. Or something like that or let's say you um, you charge up your uh, blink shoes by doing damage with inferno meaning that you can sort of charge it and then blink back and then the enemies are going to be at the arrow point here and you're over here and you can still fire the same thing um, offset again I didn't really know what to call it but let's say you're standing down here and instead of firing the inferno from your position you you drop a ward over here that fires at the um, at the nearest enemy or at your target enemy so you just right click here and then you hold on an enemy and it fires in that position meanwhile your character is still standing over here being pummeled by attacks or something like that um, just a couple of ideas I came up with um, so this is one way of impacting how the skill works with items. Um, obviously the first four ones, these can be uh, 
used for things like uh, balance balance because the more powerful you make a spell uh, for instance you can make it cost more mana you can make the cooldown longer you can make the AOE smaller if uh, if it does more damage or you can just leave it like it is and have 10 different good items that impact your skills um, and make the player have to choose between them because that is also a form of balance being forced to make a choice um, and then there's another type of balance um, that I used from Shadow Hearts um, basically where you're able to choose between elements now again this is something that Diablo does well um, I can switch back to this one um, I'm not sure if this spell doesn't uh, change elements because some of them do but you can just have an option of choosing between different elements and again like I said in the last bit here um, depending on how your elements interact with the enemies this can have a bigger or smaller impact on the gameplay um, so choosing between elements um, you can do let's say the second one is the amount of AOE then you have uh, cooldown cooldown and then you have uh, mana cost and then you have damage so you can have all of these different categories and then you can have an item that gives you let's say it gives you 10 points of inferno uh, whatever um, of these expand thingies um, meaning that you can choose to either expand the AOE um, you can expand the uh, the travel distance or you can expand um, or you can lower the mana cost or you can increase the damage um, basically meaning that as you get random items you can get uh, you can get to choose to buff a skill in a certain um, certain part of the game that your current build is lacking um, so if you have um, let's say you have a frost nova for instance and um, your inferno is at the point um, that you need it but instead you get a frost nova that uh, follows you around instead of just doing one single tick or it increases damage um, to enemies or um, I don't know a bunch of different effects basically forcing you um, or not forcing you it, it makes you choose between different items that boost different skills so you can have something like um, I don't know 10 different skills and four item slots that buff skills um, obviously you're going to rely more on those skills but you you just have to make them cooler um, and for the last bit here obviously you can still have stats um, stats like health run speed whatever um, it makes it an easier sort of curve it makes it easier to distinguish between a bad item that has low stats and some uh, some points for your economy system here and then a good item that has uh, a higher amount of stats and a lower amount of uh, stat items for instance like if you want more health you can get more health but you will have to sacrifice some other part of the game um, so this has been some thoughts on loot um, and how to create loot that has a bigger impact on gameplay um, it's I'm still thinking about this because I just played uh, Kingdoms of Amalur um, like three or four weeks ago Shadow Hearts last week and Diablo this weekend um, so there's still a lot of work to do this is more of an inspirational piece and not something that's to be considered as a finished des design um, I might get back to this eventually but for now um, I'll basically move on from this and get back to my platformer game so this has been Jonas and thank you for watching